Hello dear student, this is Dr. Smita Pakmari from NKP Cyber Institute of Medical Sciences and today we are going to learn mineral metabolism. As we all know that minerals are important part of our nutrition and just like a vitamin, they help us to grow, to develop and stay healthy. It has different functions and they perform versatile so, your macro mineral and uh, that would be calcium, phosphorus and iron. So, let's see why uh, why minerals are important to our uh, our body so they perform different functions like they are, they help in the blood coagulation they help in calcification of teeth and bone they maintain acid base equilibrium like sodium potassium calcium they also maintain osmotic equilibrium and even few minerals they form integral part of the compounds like hemoglobin thyroxine insulin vita vitamin b12 these these compound needs iron iodine zinc and cobalt respectively then they some mineral acts with the enzyme some mineral form an integral part of enzyme and they are known as a metalloenzyme while some mineral help enzymes in this action which are known as a cofactor it uh, minerals have important role in neuromuscular activation a part mm -hmm. of mineral is also different hence we classify mineral depending on the their dietary requirement per day so minerals are classified as a principal mineral where uh, we require it is a requirement is more than 100 milligram per day in the diet however trace elements are those minerals which are requiring micro quantity and the requirement is less than 100 milligram per day so the principal minerals as we all know they are the they are calcium phosphorus sodium then potassium magnesium chloride and sulfur while trace elements can again be divided into three different groups now few trace elements are very essential and they have important functions in our body so like iron copper iodine manganese zinc molybdenum then cobalt even fluorine selenium and chromium while few are possibly essential they they may have action but actions are uncertain so they are like nickel valley uh, valium then uh, cadmium and barium and few minerals are non-essential they do not they are not required by our body and even the increased concentration in our body may cause toxicity so they are non-essential minerals so let's move ahead so, so after the introduction of me, mineral we are coming to the main important topic of today's lecture and learning objective of today's lecture is that we will study calcium and phosphorus so in calcium we are going to study its function sources recommended daily allowance factor affecting absorption then calcium homeostasis and this is manifestation of calcium metabolism as calcium and phosphorus are interrelated, we are covering phosphorus in this lecture too. So it is, it will be also covered like under the heads, functions, sources and RDA, factors affecting its absorption and this is manifestation of phosphorus metabolism. Now let's first, uh, before going ahead, let's see what are the questions you can get on the calcium so most of the questions are short note are asked and you can see how calcium homeostasis is most frequently asked and any two question or any three question can get uh, get act get in a um, you you can get it as a the combination of any two or any three question you can get as a long question apart from this titani is one of the disorder where case can be framed so let's begin with the calcium. As we all know, the total content of calcium is 1 to 1.5 kg in, in our body. But out of that, 99% of calcium present in bone and teeth and only 1% for, of calcium form the miscible calcium pool, pool which is present in extracellular fluid. And this calcium is responsible for all the dynamic action of calcium. So let's see what are the functions of calcium. So one of the important role of calcium is that it helps in the activation of enzyme. 
Now, activation of enzyme can be done in two ways. Either there is comedylin mediated action or calcium has a direct action. So let's see what is the first uh, mechanism that is a comedylin mediated action. Now this action, you can see the calcium can bind with the protein, comedylin. Comedylin is a tetrameric protein and it when binds with the calcium, it forms calcium comedylin complex. This calcium comedylin complex activates protein kinases and this protein kinases in turn phosphorylates enzyme and this phosphorylated enzymes leads to the biological effects. So this is one of the mechanism by, of activation of enzyme and here are a few examples of enzymes which are activated with calcium calcium complex. So these are adenylate cyclase, phospholipase C, then calcium dependent protein kinase. Even the enzyme of glycogen metabolism like glycogen synthase, phosphorylase kinase, they are also activated by this way. And then this is glycerol D3 phosphate dehydrogenase, pyruvate carboxylase, P, uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase. These are important enzyme of carbohydrate metabolism. They are also activated with this form. And one of the important is myosin kinase, which, which we will see in next action. Now, the second type of action of activation of enzyme is the direct action. And here are a few enzymes which are activated directly by calcium. They are pancreatic lipase, coagulation enzymes, and renin. Renin, which is, uh, which is a proteolytic enzyme secreted in the stomach and it is found in infant. Now, second action of calcium is muscle contraction. Now, interaction of calcium, which is secreted from sarcoplasmic reticulum, this, uh, it, it interacts with troponin C and this uh, interaction leads to the uh, muscle contraction. Now, activation of uh, ATPase, we have seen that enzyme myosin kinase is uh, activated by calcium and this causes uh, causes cleavage of AT, uh, it stimulates ATPase from the myosin head, which leads to increased actin myosin interaction. Even calcium facilitated excitation contraction coupling and thereby it is responsible for proper muscle contraction. And it also step, uh, in, in deficiency of calcium, it leads to new, uh, neuromuscular irritability and that is, that is a manifestation which is known as titani. Now let's move ahead. So important as we know that 99% of calcium is present in teeth and bone in the form of hydroxyapatite crystal. Now teeth calcium is not metabolically active but bone calcium is metabolically active and these bones practically serve as a reservoir of calcium and this reservoir is regulated by osteoblasts and parathyroid hormone. Another function is calcium acts as a blood coagulation factor number four. Now this uh, calcium reacts with, uh, reacts with prothrombin to form the coagul uh, to activate coagulation cascade. Now you can see the EDTA which, uh, which is used as an anticoagulant. This EDTA has a capacity to chelate calcium and as it chelate calcium it will inhibit a clotting clotting mechanism in the serum that's why it is it is it is used as an anticoagulant calcium acts as a secondary messenger mostly to the inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol group and this uh, it acts as a secondary messenger for glucagon and epinephrine it acts as a tertiary messenger with cyclic amp and uh, the hormone which uh, it, it acts on is the idh anti-diuretic hormone. Now, calcium also has important role in nerve conduction. It releases neurotransmitter at presynaptic and postsynaptic terminal. Now, uh, the calcium also helps in the release of hormones from endocrine gland, like insulin, parathormone, and calcitonin. The release of this hormone is again stimulated by calcium itself. In my, on myocardium, it, it prolongs cardiac systole and uh, inadvertent administration of 
IV calcium can lead to the cardiac arrest. Hence, we have to be very cautious while administering IV calcium gluconate. Calcium also helps in the secretory process. It microtubule and microfilament mediated functions like endocytosis, exocytosis, and cell motility. It is again controlled by the calcium uh, calcium secretion in the cell. It also uh, helpful in contact inhibition and it maintains cell to cell adhesion. So these are the important functions of calcium and most frequently asked question, a theory question in the examination. So let's see why, uh, what is a daily requirement? Daily requirement is known as RDA, which is also known as recommended daily allowance. In adult, it is 800 milligram. In latest edition of Vasudevan, it is given 500, but most of the books, they are following 800 milligram. So adults, 800 milligram, but it, uh, Requirement increases in pregnancy and lactation up to the 1500 milligram. In growing children, there is more calcium uh, bone mineralization uh, is going on. So their requirement is also increased from 800 to 200 milligram. You can see the most of the sources of calcium are milk and milk product, fish and green leafy vegetables. In that, the milk is the richest source of calcium uh, and other milk products also except butter while egg yolk fish green leaf vegetable beans they are medium source now cereals are poor in the calcium but as we eat cereals in uh, as a staple diet so this again it uh, be, uh, it 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 functions as a major source of calcium in our diet now let's see what are the factors affecting absorption of calcium. So absorption of calcium is again active process. It is it occurs in first and second part of duodenum and it requires carrier protein. And this carrier protein is also uh, it, uh, it it requires energy in the form of calcium dependent ATPs. So factors which increases calcium absorption is Calcitriol, Calcit this is an active form of vitamin D and it increases absorption of calcium through the intestine. We will see in detail later on. Then parathyroid hormone also increases absorption of calcium, but it also, uh, its, its action is mediated by again through the vitamin D synthesis. The acidity and lactose, presence of lactose, it causes it cause increased solubilization of calcium and thereby increased absorption. This lysine, arginine and other amino acids, they form soluble salts of calcium and thereby it increases absorption. It is said that with high protein diet, the ab uh, absorption of calcium is 15% while in low protein diet, it, it remains 5%. So high protein uh, intake also favors calcium absorption. Now let's move to the part which are the factors decreasing calcium absorption. So it is the phytate and oxalate. We uh, get this uh, compounds in through the vegetable and fruits. So they form insoluble salts with the calcium and thereby decreases calcium absorption. Now, high phosphate content may also decrease calcium absorption. Now, ideal calcium phosphorus ratio in diet should lie between 1 as to 2 to 2 as to 1. So, then in case of mal malabsorption syndrome, like uh, which leads to impairment of fat absorption, the free fatty acid forms calcium soaps and which are insoluble. Then high alkaline pH and high fiber diet, they also decreases calcium absorption from the intestine. Now let's come to the plasma calcium level. The normal level of blood calcium is 9 to 11 milligram per dl. Out of that, you can see 50% of calcium is in ionized form. This ionized form is free form and it is metabolically 
active. Now, 10% of this calcium is, it is anion bound, like citrate bound. Uh, and uh, this form the complex. And this is also, uh, this is also diffusible form. So total 50 R plus 10. So 60% of calcium is diffusible. And 40% remaining, you can see it is a protein bound. And this is the non-diffusible form and this is metabolically inactive. So you can see out of total calcium, 50% ionic calcium is a major active calcium in the blood. Now let's see the very important part of today's lecture is the homeostasis of calcium or in either other way, there are the factors which regulate calcium levels in the blood, which is most often asked theory question. So let's see what are the factors which affect homeostasis of calcium. So there are three hormones which, uh, which act in coordinated manner to maintain blood calcium level normal. So these are calcitriol, parathyroid hormone and calcitonin. We will see this in detail. And apart from hormone, like concentration of phosphorus, we have already discussed that calcium and phosphorus, they have reciprocal relationship. So ionic product of calcium and phosphorus in blood, it should be 40. And in cases of renal insufficiency, the excretion of calcium may lead to titani. And that, uh, that, also, that is also important factor of calcium homeostasis. Then serum protein. As we know that 40% of calcium is bound to the protein. So decrease in the serum albumin concentration per 1 gram per DL, it will lead to the reduction of serum calcium 0.8 gram per DL. But uh, but uh, it is that because uh, though the total calcium will reduce, ionic calcium level will not change. So this is a little bit of satisfactory. Now alkalosis and acidosis, this, this also favors, alkalosis favors binding of calcium with the protein, while acidosis favor ionization. So acidosis will <coughs> make calcium available. So now let's discuss the role of three hormone in detail. So most all the three hormone like vitamin D, parath hormone and calcitonin, the majority, uh, they act on the three major organ. One is intestine, second is the bone and third is the kidney. So let's see what is the role of vitamin D. So normal blood calcium level is 9 to 11 milligram percent and uh, what is uh, this vitamin D when it is synthesized? First action is that it increases vitamin D acts as a local hormone on the intestinal cell. It in it enters in the cytoplasmic uh, cytoplasm binds with the cytoplasmic inner cell. So this is the action on the intestine. Now let's see what is the action of vitamin D on the bone. In bone, vitamin, uh, vitamin D, when, I, when it is present alone, it stimulates osteoblast. Now, uh, osteoblast stimulation also increases the level of alkaline phosphatase and which increases local phosphate level, level in the bone and this promotes the calcification of bone. Now, vitamin D also acts as a response of parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone also stimulate the vitamin D secretion. So with parathyroid hormone, this vitamin D stimulates osteoclast and this osteoclast mobilize calcium and phosphorus from the bone. Now let's watch, let's see what is the action on intestine. This vitamin, uh, the active calcitriol is formed in the kidney itself and it increases reabsorption of calcium from the renal tubule. So what is the total effect of um, vitamin D on the calcium metabolism? It increases calcium level in the blood. 
Now let's see second hormone that is a parathyroid hormone. This parathyroid hormone is secreted from the uh, parathyroid gland. It is secreted in the form of pre-pro hormone which is cleaved into pro-parathyroid hormone and parathyroid hormone sequentially. Now this parathyroid ho hormone is secreted as a result of low blood calcium. Low blood calcium level acts as a stimulus for the synthesis of parathyroid hormone. And now what are the actions of parathyroid hormone? You can see in the bone, this parathyroid hormone stimulates osteoclast. Now, this osteoclast in uh, it secretes <coughs> enzymes like pyrophosphatase, lactate, collagenase, and this leads to reabsorption and solubilization of bone matrix because of breaking of uh, collagen and making the calcium loose and soluble. So, it mobilizes calcium and phosphate from the bone. In mm, parathyroid hormone acts on the kidney and it increases hydroxylation of vitamin D to form the calcitriol. Now this calcitriol increases calcium reabsorption from the renal tubular cell which is a rapid action and uh, rapid action to save the calcium and it also increases excretion of uh, sorry it also decreases excretion of calcium from the renal tubule and in the action it increases excretion of phosphate ion from the renal tubule. So it also the same scale, uh, increases level of calcium in the blood. Now, in on intestine, parathormone cannot act directly, but it acts through the vitamin D. So, it uh, through uh, as it increases synthesis of vitamin D in the kidney, it leads to increased synthesis of calcium binding protein, and it uh, increases intestinal absorption of calcium from the intestinal cell. So what is the main result uh, of action of parathyroid hormone? It increases calcium level and it is also known as a negative feedback regulation because low blood calci calcium uh, stimulates parathyroid hormone and it increases calcium level. Uh, but remember this action of parathyroid horm hormone lasts only for one hour. So now let's see the third hormone, which is known as calcitonin. Now please um, remember the calcitonin and calcitriol is different. Don't get confused. Calcitriol is active vitamin D, while calcitonin, it is synthesized from the parafollicular cell of the thyroid gland. So this... Um, this raised blood calcium is the stimulus for the synthesis of calcitonin. Even hormones like gastrin, glucagon and biological amines, they, are, they also stimulate synthesis of calcitonin. Now this calcitonin, it, uh, on the bone, in bone, it increases osteoblastic activity while decreases osteoplastic activity. So uh, in total, it inhibits reabsorption of bone and it decreases blood calcium level. In the kidney, it also increases excretion of phosphate. <coughs> so in total, you can see the calcitonin decreases calcium level and its actions are antagonist to the parathyroid hormone action. The calcitonin, uh, it has its diagnostic significance because it acts as a tumor marker and this is a tumor for marker for medullary carcinoma of thyroid as well as, well as the lung and bronchus malignancy. <coughs> Remember that the teeth calcium are not subject to the regulation. We, uh, we previously discussed that only bone calcium acts as a reservoir of calcium but teeth calcium is not regulated. Now let's see when to check for the calcium level. Calcium levels are checked with the neuro neurological uh, symptoms, irritability, then presence of urinary calcula calculi, ectopic calcification because of metastasis, suspected malignancies or renal disorder like polyuria, polydipsia. When chronic renal failure is suspected and the patient on the prolonged drug like hypercalcemia, vitamin D and thiazide diuretics. So what are the disorders of calcium? Metabolism, yeah. 
Now we have seen the homeostasis of calcium. Now let's discuss disorder of calcium metabolism. So hypercalcemia is a disorder where it is characterized by increased level of calcium. When it is more than 11 millig uh, milligram per dl, we call it as a hypercalcemia. The etiology of hypercalcemia uh, is mostly hyperparathyroid thyroidism in the form of adenoma of parathyroid gland or ectopic parathyroid hormone secretion by any tumor. Apart from this, there are if the disorders of bones like multiple myeloma, packet disease and metastatic carcinoma. It will also lead to the high um, osteolysis and result into hypercalcemia. The hormonal disorder like thyrotoxicosis, Addison disease, then prolonged immobilization, while chronic inflammatory disorders like tuberculosis, leprosy, sarcoidosis, and drugs, uh, thiazide drug, then vitamin D intake, IV calcium on lithium therapy may lead to the hypercalcemia. So effects of hypercalcemia, we find that in serum, calcium levels will be high and phosphate level will be low. But in uh, through the urine, there is increased excretion of calcium and phosphorus through the urine. INI serum calcium levels are very really high, up to 6 to 9 milligram per dl. And these are mostly associated, associated with the raised alkaline phosphatase level. And uh, you can find urinary calculi and signs of osteoporosis as a result of etiology. The symptoms and signs uh, of hyperglycemia are lethargy, then muscle weakness, loss of appetite, constipation, nausea, increased myocardial contractility and susceptibility of fracture because, uh, because of osteoporosis. Now let's come to the another spectrum of disorder which is known as hypo Calcemia. Hypocalcemia is when blood levels are low, lower than 8.8 .8 milligram per dl. So most frequent cause of this is because of hypoparathyroidism, either by acci uh, accidental or autoimmune disorders of parathyroid gland. Now other causes is it can be because of deficiency of vitamin D that is hypovitaminosis D because of malabsorption or other reason. Then medullary carcinoma of thyroid which increases calcitonin level which can all which leads to the hypocalcemia. Then malabsorption disorder, acute pancreatitis and alkalosis this decreases calcium level and that's why hypocalcemia. The renal failure, renal uh, tubular acidosis of phosphate infusion it increases phosphate, uh, phosphate uh, it increases phosphate uh, absorption and uh, calcium uh, excretion and that's why it leads to the hypocalcemia. Now again, signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia are muscle cramps, paresthesia and like pain in the uh, neuronal end, neuromuscular irritability and muscle twitching. Now in mild deficiency of calcium, you can see uh, it occurs in chronic calcium deficiency, like in dietary deficiency of vitamin D or calcium, renal efficiency, uh, defic insufficiency and magnesium defic deficiency, which can lead to the chronic calcium deficiency. And this can result into like this white patches on the nail or there is the deformities on the weight bearing bone, like this is knock knee and board leg, board leg. So this is also we found in the same thing we found in rickets also. So treatment you have to give with the oral calcium and vitamin D supplementation. And of course you have to treat the underlying cause. Now severe calcium deficiency, it is very important. You may get case on this. So this is a titani. Titani when the calcium level uh, reduces below 7.5 milligram per dl, it leads to the titani. And this is a serious life-threatening disorder and it, it is characterized by neuromuscular irritability, spasms and convulsion in the patient. Most of the time, the cause is accidental or autoimmune removal of parathyroid gland. So there are few diagnostic signs of this titani. We will discuss in next slide. Before that, we can see 
So titani, uh, the level of calcium is low. Serum calcium and calcium levels are low. Phosphate level is high. Urine calcium and phosphate both levels are reduced. In treatment, we it is this has to be treated rigorously, and IV calcium gluconate is given to treat titani. Now it is important that titani will never be caused by vitamin D deficiency. So the vitamin D deficiency leads to the rickets, but not titani. Now these are the signs of titani. So most important sign is the carpopedal spasm. Now carpopedal spasm here you can see this is a flexion of wrist joint, then flexion of meta uh, metatarsal met, metaphalangeal joint, and here you can see there is extension in the interphalangeal joint and adduction of Thumb, thumbs and fingers. So this is known as a carpopedal spasm. Now carpopedal spasm can be uh, can be induced in the patients of hypocalcemia if there is a BP inflated BP cuff is kept for three minutes. So inflation of BP cuff uh, for three minutes will induce this carpopedal spasm, and this sign is known as a Trousseau sign, which is again diagnostic feature of titani now coming to the another sign which is known as a cheustic sign this is uh, tapping on the facial muscle will lead to the facial muscle contraction and this is known as a chest of sign these are the signs with uh, uh, with which we can diagnose the titani now apart from this in severe cases you get the laryngeal stridors like this is abnormal um, sound through the larynx and on the ECG, you can find prolonged QT interval. Now, relationship. So, here now we have finished with the calcium. Now, let's see what is the interlinking part between calcium and phosphorus. What is the uh, relationship between calcium and phosphorus? So, you can see RDA, recommended daily allowance, is same for both. Because ratio of calcium to phosphorus should be 1 as to 1 for optimum absorption so it uh, both are having same rda 800 milligram per day in diet optimum calcium to phosphorus ratio it should it, which can vary from 1 as to 2 to 2 as to 1 if the ratio lies between this range then it favors optimum absorption of calcium now blood calcium uh, in blood calcium you can see the ionic product of calcium and phosphorus it should be 40 if it is uh, in case of children, it can be increased up to the 50, and this ratio is important for cal proper calcification of bone. So, in children, it is high. So, as we have seen that calcium and phosphorus are interlinked, let's move to the phosphorus metabolism of phosphorus. So, you can see total body content of phosphorus is same as a calcium it is 1 kg and 82 out of this 80 to 80 percent uh, remains in bone and teeth 10 percent is can be found in muscle and blood and 10 percent is found in chemical compounds so this is the active phosphorus functions of phosphorus you can see uh, apart with the calcium it it gives strength to the bone bones and teeth and it is it is deposited there now Important part of phosphorus is it is important for uh, it leads to the synthesis of high energy compound like adenosine triphosphate, guanosine triphosphate, and creatine triphosphate. This compound donates phosphate group uh, and gives energy to the cellular metabolism. This phospholipid, phosphoprotein, and nucleic acid all these are compounds which contain phosphorus. In nucleic acid, the phosphodiester bonds are formed between the nucleotides and thereby it leads to the synthesis of DNA and RNA. Now, uh, the phosphorus also acts as a part of nucleotide coenzyme like NAD, NADP and pyridoxal phosphate. And it also helps in the activation of protein and enzymes by the phosphorylation. The phosphate buffer is the important buffer of intracellular system and uh, this this helps in term to maintain acid-base balance
Now, formation of phosphate esters. This is one of the important function, like glucose six phosphate formation of phospholipid and formation of phosphoprotein is an important. These are the important functions of phosphorus. Now, what is the ratio of? Again, we have already discussed. Ratio is one to one, and calcium to phosphorus, eight hundred milligram. In infant, it may increase. Like in milk, it it has ratio in calcium is phosphorus is two as to one. Now, sources is like milk, cereal, leafy veg vegetable, cheese, bean, and then yellow part of egg and meat and fish. These are the sources for phosphorus. Absorption occurs in the jejunum and say uh, it is increased by calcitriol uh, and acidity it increases absorption of phosphorus while fight it reduces absorption of the uh, phosphorus now concentration of uh, phosphorus in blood is 3 to 4 mg per dl you can see the serum level is 3 to 4 mg per dl while um whole blood it is 40 mg per dl so here you can see the uh, major presence of phosphate is in the blood rbc and wbc so uh, you can see if the sample is hemolyzed and we are estimating serum level then it would be high in hemolyzed sample so you have to be very cautious while processing the um, serum phosphorus level now in contrast to the glucose the fasting level of phosphorus is low as compared to post meal level why because in post meal condition all phosphates uh, phosphate is uh, busy in the synthesis of atp generation that's why post meal levels are of phosphates are low the distribution is for of phosphate is 40% in it, it is it remains in the free iron form while 10% in the protein bound form and 50% it is it is bound to cation like calcium for magnesium sodium and potassium now excretion it is excreted 500 mg per day in urine now renal threshold is more than 2 mg per dl and parathyroid hormone inhibits reabsorption of phosphate by renal tubule Let's discuss few disorders of phosphate metabolism. So, increase in the level of phosphate is known as hyperphosphatemia, and this is mostly due to the increased absorption of phosphate. Like there is increased uh, increased administration of vitamin D or increased phosphate infusion in the patient. The few conditions which increases cell lysis, like cancer chemotherapy, presence of secondaries in the bone, that will also lead to hyperphosphatemia. The conditions which decreases excretion of phosphate, in like in renal impairment, hypoparathyroidism, and acidosis, will lead to hyperphosphate hyperphosphatemia. Even some drugs, prolonged administration of drug like chlorothiazide, nepinephrine, and prosimide, will also lead to hyperphosphatemia. now let's come to the another condition which is hypophosphatemia now this hypophosphatemia phosphatemia is a level less than normal so it it may be due to increased absorption of phosphate like in case of malnutrition malabsorption chronic diarrhea vitamin d deficiency in this condition the absorption of phosphate will be reduced very significantly and this this should be uh reverse this uh, arrow should be reverse so this in this condition absorption of malnutrition malabsorption chronic diarrhea which leads to the decreased absorption of phos phosphate and this will lead to the hypophosphatemia even there is intracellular shift like increased uh, administration of insulin therapy or presence of renal ricket it causes intracellular shift in the phosphate and that's why it leads to the hypophosphatemia whenever there is increased urinary excretion of phosphate like hypo hyperparathyroid hormone and hypophosphatic phosphatemic rickets it leads to the hypophosphatemia then few like hypercalcemia chronic alcoholism and drugs that also because of pres uh, presence of antacid diuretic and salicylate will lead to the hypophosphatemia so this we have discussed uh, in today's class we have discussed calcium and phosphorus in next class we will discuss iron metabolism so 
we'll continue in the next class and if you like this uh, video please do like it thank you